Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. Chapter 36 Elihu also proceeded and said, Suffer me a little and I will show thee that I have yet to speak on God's behalf. I will fetch my knowledge from afar and will ascribe righteousness to my Maker. But truly my words shall not be false. He that is perfect in knowledge is with thee. Behold, God is mighty and despiseth not any. He is mighty in strength and wisdom. He preserveth not the life of the wicked, but giveth right to the poor. He withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous, but with kings are they on the throne. Yea, he doth establish them forever, and they are exalted. And if they be bound in fetters, and beholden in cords of affliction, then he showeth them their work, and their transgressions that they have exceeded. He openeth also their ear to discipline, and commandeth that they return from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword, and they shall die without knowledge. But the hypocrites in heart heap up wrath. They cry not when he bindeth them. They die in youth, and their life is among the unclean. He delivereth the poor in his affliction, and openeth their ears in oppression. Even so would he have removed thee out of the strait into a broad place, where there is no straightness and that which should be set on thy table should be full of fatness. But thou hast fulfilled the judgment of the wicked. Judgment and justice take hold on thee. Because there is wrath, beware lest he take thee away with his stroke. Then a great ransom cannot deliver thee. Will he esteem thy riches? No, not gold, nor all the forces of strength. Desire not the night when people are cut off in their place. Take heed, regard not iniquity, for this hast thou chosen rather than affliction. Behold, God exalteth by his power. Who teacheth like him? Who hath enjoined him his way? Or who can say, Thou hast wrought iniquity? Remember that thou magnify his work, which men behold. Every man may see it. Man may behold it afar off. Behold, God is great, and we know him not. Neither can the number of his years be searched out. For he maketh small the drops of water. They pour down rain according to the vapor thereof, which the clouds do drop and distill upon man abundantly. Also, can any understand the spreadings of the clouds, or the noise of his tabernacle? Behold, he spreadeth his light upon it, and covereth the bottom of the sea. For by them judgeth he the people. He giveth meat in abundance. With clouds he covereth the light, and commandeth it not to shine by the cloud that cometh betwixt. The noise thereof showeth concerning it, the cattle also concerning the vapor. Chapter 12 Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee. Yet let me talk with thee of thy judgments. Wherefore doth the way of the wicked prosper? Wherefore are all they happy that deal very treacherously? Thou hast planted them. Yea, they have taken root. They grow. Yea, they bring forth fruit. Thou art near in their mouth and far from their reins. But thou, O Lord, knowest me. Thou hast seen me and tried mine heart toward thee. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter, and prepare them for the day of slaughter. How long shall the land mourn, and the herbs of every field wither, for the wickedness of them that dwell therein? The beasts are consumed, and the birds, because they said, He shall not see our last end. If thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace wherein thou trustedst they wearied thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan? For even thy brethren and the house of thy father, even they have dealt treacherously with thee. Yea, they have called a multitude after thee. Believe them not, though they speak fair words unto thee. I have forsaken mine house. I have left mine heritage. I have given the dearly beloved of my soul into the hand of her enemies. Mine heritage is unto me as a lion in the forest. It crieth out against me. Therefore have I hated it. 
Mine heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about are against her. Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field, come to devour. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it desolate, and being desolate it mourneth unto me. The whole land is made desolate, because no man layeth it to heart. The spoilers are come upon all high places through the wilderness. For the sword of the Lord shall devour from the one end of the land even to the other end of the land. No flesh shall have peace. They have sown wheat, but shall reap thorns. They have put themselves to pain, but shall not profit. And they shall be ashamed of your revenues because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord against all mine evil neighbors that touch the inheritance which I have caused my people Israel to inherit. Behold, I will pluck them out of their land and pluck out the house of Judah from among them. And it shall come to pass, after that I have plucked them out, I will return and have compassion on them, and will bring them again, every man to his heritage and every man to his land. And it shall come to pass, if they will diligently learn the ways of my people to swear by my name, the Lord liveth, as they taught my people to swear by Baal, then shall they be built in the midst of my people. But if they will not obey, I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation, saith the Lord. Today's message is entitled, Overcoming a Modern Evil. Overcoming a Modern Evil. Let us pray, loving Heavenly Father. We are asking that your Holy Spirit will teach us from your word and give us grace to live for you during these closing days of earth's history. For Christ's sake, Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to a very evil and wicked time. And research has shown that many are hooked on pornography. Pornography. The word porn is the fourth highest ranked search word by children under seven years old. And the average age when a person first views porn is only 11 years. The word porn is the fourth highest ranked search term by children under seven years old and the average age when a person first views pornography is only 11 years old. Research shows that about 40 million adults visit pornographic websites daily and so it shouldn't be a surprise that nearly half of all divorces list pornography as a contributing factor. Half of all divorces list pornography as a contributing factor. The statistics on what some call the most destructive force in our culture are staggering. More than 11 million Americans have a sexual addiction and child pornography generates about $3 billion yearly and at least 25% of all employees who use the internet at work use it to look at pornography. Even at work, it truly is a road to hell with broken people lying all over the place. This, this problem of pornography is a road to hell with broken people lying all over the place. A friend of mine, our society continues to wave the freedom banner while millions walk into slavery looking for love in all the wrong places. Ladies and gentlemen, the Apostle Paul does not turn a blind eye to the problem of sexual addiction. He makes a plea for purity. The Apostle Paul under God makes a plea for purity. He says, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 to 6. You see, friend of mine, the Roman culture to which Paul wrote was sexually permissive. His challenge to instill 
the notion of purity in their culture would be even more relevant today. Ours is a sexually hyped up society. We have pornography in music and pornography in, in reading material and pornography in pictures and pornography in movies and pornography on DVDs all over the place. But friend of mine, if you struggle with sexual addiction, you need to face this ugly sin with a passion of someone going to war to conquer an enemy. We say that again, if we struggle with sexual addiction, we need to face this ugly sin with a passion of someone going to war to conquer an enemy. And so consider these three steps to victory over pornography. Three steps. Number one, we must admit that we have a problem. If you have a problem in this area, you must admit it. It would not help to say, well, you know, uh, if it wasn't because of them, I would not have done it. I'm not a really a bad person. If you have a problem, you must admit it. Number two, you must get help with accountability. Get help that is attached to accountability, meaning that somebody will hold you responsible for carrying out assignments that are geared to helping you overcome. And number three, we must remove all impurity from the life. Throw out all the DVDs and the books and the movies and everything. If you have a pornographic channel on cable, tell them, take it off. Make a clean break and begin filling your mind with the pure things of God. Friend of mine, we cannot find victory on our own in these matters. Victory is in Jesus. You see, friend of mine, the Apostle Paul had his own struggles with sin. He says in Romans chapter 7, verse 18, he says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Romans 7, 19 verse 20 says, Now, now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. In his distress, Paul cries out in verse 20, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Then he ends with the hope of victory in Romans 7.25. He says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 57, he gives a little more detail by saying, But thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Friend of mine, victory over sin and death is possible through Jesus Christ our Lord. The song says, Earth hath no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Oh yes, friend of mine, your battle is really an obsession with self. Obsession with pornography is really an obsession with self. Oh, but growing in Christ and giving our lives to Christ is learning to live for others, not our own feelings. Friend of mine, your choices do not affect only you. Our choices negatively impact those around us. So, we need to choose purity and experience real freedom in Jesus Christ. Friend of mine, it doesn't matter the habit or the sin that binds us. There is victory in Jesus. There is victory over pornography and every evil habit. For the Bible says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, bless each listener today. Help us to know that victory is possible through Jesus Christ our Lord and that earth hath no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. In Jesus' name, Amen.